Some of you are probably tired of Wheel of Time videos. I'm not. What we have here is a very interesting breakdown of the Wheel of Time from Barnes & Noble. This article was released very early this year, and what I'd like to do is go through it with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump on into it because I think there's some really interesting facts that come out about the series once you kind of look at the raw numbers and data. This is high quality content, right? Me reading an article to you. <laughs> if you've arrived here by traveling any logical path, you need no introduction to Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, a series that crosses 14 door-stopping tombs seized upon the imagination of hundreds of thousands with its sprawling scope, mountainous stakes, and stupendous detail. Okay, already I have a problem with the article, very small thing, but it sold around 80 million copies, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and safely say it's not hundreds of thousands. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's millions. And if you're anything like me, the story of the two rivers, Talvir, and forever changed your understanding of the relationship between the written word and the possibilities of storytelling. Strongly agree. It also peeled the cellophane of the greater fantasy genre and enabled me to peek at what other literary treats lay within. My dyslexia is gonna start showing. But I'm not here to gush over the colossal pillars of the sword and sorcery. I'm here to talk about in an attempt to comprehend its size. Weighing in at over four million words, The Wheel of Time is assuredly among the longest fantasy series out there. Although reliable data on the matter is elusive, Wikipedia suggests it is some one million words longer than the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I disagree just by looking at Malazan. It's chief competition for the honor, omitting shared universe tales like Mercedes Lackey and El Lim. Okay, so this is a, a, a kind of getting rid of a lot of the things around Malazan, so that's that's debatable. In short, the thing is massive, and what I endeavor to do in the following spaces is understand how Robert Jordan and later Brandon Sanderson dispended those 4.4 million odd words. How did word distribution to his characters change over time? If you're still reading, I bet you already know the story well. By the end of this, you'll know it by the numbers. This guy is writing an awesome article, and I'm super excited for this. Let's start at top level and thread our way down from there. Here's a look at word count over time by the individual book. The median book length for the series is represented in the dotted line. So already, this is a really awesome little graph here. What we have is that the highest length book seems to be Lord of Chaos at just under 400,000 words. The shortest is, by no surprise, Path of Daggers, which is, it looks to me, about 2.3, 2 400 thousand. And the median is right above 300,000 words per book. So if you're familiar with the series, none of this is probably too shocking, but it is nice to kind of see it just laid down nice and nice and obvious for you. Interestingly enough, what Jordan put forth lengthwise within the Eye of the World was a pretty good indication of how the rest of the series would fall out. Not bad considering at that point, both he and Tor, his publishing company, thought it was going to be a trilogy. Pause for polite laughter. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that that was actually, it was originally supposed to be a trilogy. Good job, Jordan. Keep it that, keep it the trilogy length. <laughs> Books four through six easily represent the heftiest segment of the series. Yep. And then there's a very clear pattern of gradual increase from Path of Daggers all the way through Memory of Light. Yeah, actually, I never really noticed that, but you have this spike up and then a massive fall and then a slow back climb upwards. Never really thought about that. One of the more interesting data points I found while analyzing the information was the length of chapters throughout the Wheel of Time. First, here's the chart I'll diagnose below. Distribution of chapters length in the full series. Okay, the average seems to be six to 7,000 words, right about in there. As it's pointed out in the axis label, the horizontal x-axis represents chapter length in the words, and the y-axis is how many times throughout the books a chapter of the length occurred. Yeah, the red vertical intersection represents the series average, which is around 6,000 words. I did a good job with my eyes. Note that the marker occurs on the middle of the primary distribution, or hump. This verifies something we all know. If Jordan wrote an outlier chapter, it was likely a long one, not a short one. Yeah. Astute readers might have picked up on a missing data point in the above plot. Nicely done in Memory of Light, the long-awaited chapter, The Last Battle, registered a staggering 81,200 words. Oh, so that's not even the... That one's just way off on its own somewhere. Okay. Whereas the x-axis on the above chapter rests at 20,000. For some perspective, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was around 78,000 words in its entirety. Oh my god. The last battle chapter is longer than the Sorcerer's Stone. I did not know that, but it makes sense. Yeah, yeah interesting little chart. Shows it by chapter breakdown as well. This is a lot of information to glance, so I'll just still do a few salient observations. Eye of the World is one of the more normally distributed books in terms of chapter word count, which essentially means it's the most common chapter length and comparable number of chapters that were longer or shorter. So basically, Eye of the World became like the median across the board, it seems, for the series. 
Dragon Reborn was right skewed, which means there is a heavy distribution of exceedingly long chapters. Makes sense with what's going on in the book. Winter's Heart was the most homogenous or consistent chapter length because it was the most boring. All right, now to demonstrate to what degree of immensity the last battle was an outlier in the series, chapter distribution by length of book. Oh my God. Oh my God. Direct your attention to the final panel of the grid and then all the way to the right of it. There it is. Tarman Gaiden represented by a tiny green speck. Cute, isn't it? While we're zoomed out, let's take the opportunity to examine the outlier chapters over time. You can see that the first real eye-opening long chapter according to Lord of Chaos. And then Robert Jordan breaked into mega chapters for a couple of books, Winter's Heart, Cross Trail of Dive Dreams, and Memory Light all had at least one intense chapter that was 15,000 words. Robert Jordan and his publisher clearly became more comfortable with the departure from conventional over time, and Brandon Sanderson was also allowed to dip into the well. Chapter length information is a bit dense, so let's delve into something more colorful. Yay, gender analysis. I'll start with a plot which visualizes the percentage of words written from point of view of given gender by book. Male, okay, so yeah, we got mostly male in Eye of the World. And then uh, we have got the Great Hunt, which kind of goes against that. Oh, we have some not NA. Uh, and then women quickly take over and men never take up the most, again, by a lot. And then there's a couple non-binary characters because Wheel of Time's progressive as f Note the NA points refer to scenes where either quotes, passages from in-world text, or narrative points of view, no gender specified. Makes sense. The story here is lucid. The Eye of the World was dominated by male points of view, but women began reclaiming points of the series in The Great Hunt, and by the end of the series had the better of it. We'll come back to viewpoints shortly after, but first, let's zoom this view back out to word count. After all, if one chapter received 10 viewpoints and all 100 words of length, and another character received one viewpoint of 5,000 word, that allotment clearly favors the latter. So now this is breaking down by word count. So men get almost all of the word count in uh, Eye of the World, Great Hunt goes against that a little bit, and then they firstly cross with Fires of Heaven. Yep. And then men come back over once for Lord of Chaos, and then women dominate all the way until Towers of Midnight, and then men finish it off with Towers of Midnight and Memory of Light. And the non-binary characters get two uh, appearances. <laughs> now we can specifically see that men received more words during the first four books, and then were first eclipsed during Fires of Heaven. Men and women received an extremely similar number of words during Lord of Chaos, and then women collected the lion's share of words for six consecutive books before men handily pocketed more words of the series' final two installments. Viewpoint analysis. We analyzed chapter length earlier, but looking at viewpoint to find a period of text that is narrated by the same character might be interesting. Many, if not most, of the Wheel of Time is populated with chapters that contain multiple viewpoints. Average words per viewpoint jump for the length of segment of book. So we have Eye of the World coming in really high, and I thought it'd be the dominant one by far, but actually it's Crossroads of Twilight, which holds at nearly 6,000 uh, words before viewpoint change. And of course, to no one's surprise, the lowest is Memory of Light because we jump between characters like crazy in Memory of Light. It's not even, it's not even a thousand words. That's incredible. Robert Jordan actually started the series off with the second highest average viewpoint length of the full saga before leveling out between The Great Hunt and Winter's Heart. Then there's a bit of a par paradigm shift back to long viewpoints during Crossroads Twilight and Knife of Dreams, which likely contributed to those books' reputation for being more sloggy than their counterparts. Never thought about that. Also, maybe the lack of things happening. Then Sanderson reeled the line back in as Towers of Midnight and R Memory of Light closed Rand's story out with the two fastest-paced books of them all. Yep, one called here, Crossroads of Twilight, had an average viewpoint length was at six times greater than Memory of Light. Yeah. Cultural. Analysis. Diverse fabric of Jordan's world effectively monikered Randland by its fan, populated by people of all color and culture and circumstance, was the principal contributor to its verisimilitude. Never heard that word. Judge me. Jordan never hesitated to tell you where in his world a new face was from. So to which culture did he dedicate the vantage point? Okay. Holy Gonna, gonna go with Andor here. Jesus, because we have, of course, the Chalviran, Elaine, Egwene, all, all the Two Rivers people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I just, I knew Andor would be first, but not by that much. Holy Christ. Ah, well, I suppose we could have seen that coming, given that six principal viewpoints characters, Rand, Matt, Perrin, Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve, are all Andoran. To denew information about the other regions, let's simply remove Andor from the plot line. That seems a bit more fair. Then we have Saldea, which I did not see coming. Unknown, which, okay, I yield Sean Chan. Marindi, Far Manning, Tyr, Karian, Tarabon, 
yeah, all right, it's just going to break down more and more, and I think we all kind of aren't really surprised by a lot we see here, except I wish Ogier was higher up. I find it interesting that we get more words from characters with no specified nationality than we do from any given nationality, apart from Saldea and Endor. I suspect the largely has to do with the fact that none of the Chosen have original nationality specified. Hmm. Of course, an argument can be made for Rand's word count being bucketed as Aiel. Hmm. Yeah, you could. From the mundanities of farming, rendering, wares, or as a court intrigue of nobility to the high magic of the Aes Sedai, Forsaken, we got a glimpse of Rand land from top to bottom. Statistically, it looks like this. Okay, well, this is the occupational breakdown. I care about y'all's occupations. Let's let's dive into it. A few pointers on reading this. Height on the y-axis does not mean that there were a lot of viewpoints from the occupation. It means those individuals' viewpoints were long. Oh. Where's Blacksmith? Did you not put Blacksmith on here? Smith? No, no Blacksmith. No Smith. Dude, are you not counting Perrin as a Blacksmith? Density indicates the volume. Purple streak is Talviran. Yeah. That's not an occupation. Mm. Which is how I segmented Matt, Rand, Matt, and Parent. Okay, so I guess it's just to keep them from skewing everything. As to keep the rest of the data unmuddled. All right, I can get what you're doing, fine. But it's not an occupation, fight me. What we see is a high volume of scenes from Aes Sedai, duh, which probably comes as no surprise, yeah, with notable contributions from Children of the Light, Forsaken Queens, Soldiers, Warders, and characters with no specified occupation, yeah. And one final view of the word count distributed amongst our fatally fractured white tower. Interesting. Oh, Amarlin's seat coming out on top. I thought a blue or green would be on top, but I'm apparently very wrong. Green Aja, yellow Aja, blue Aja, red Aja, red Okay, that's, okay. We're gonna move on past that. Well, we have to skip over the Aja analysis because it contains a spoiler. So if you have not finished the series, don't, don't, don't read this. There you have it. Over 14 books, the numbers raise some interesting questions. Was the story truly about Randall Thor's transition from sheep herder to savior, or was it a tale of political infiltration in the world's magical court? It was, of course, both of these things, so much more, and I'm reminded, as if I'd ever forgotten, what a sparkling treasure we had in Robert Jordan. All data scrubbed from the Watt Wiki. So this was a really interesting article to read, and if you're a mega fan like me, especially. And what I'd like to kind of make a biggest pull towards is a lot of people, when uh, Amazon made the announce for Wheel of Time and called it a female, don't, don't focus on Obama's face camera, Jesus. <laughs> so what I wanna pull back to is when Amazon announced the Wheel of Time show, and they, and they said it was the first female-dominated fantasy series. A lot of people freaked out and didn't like that. They thought they were trying to do feminize the Wheel of Time and these things. And what I gotta tell you is the Wheel of Time has been pretty feminist and progressive, especially for the time it was written in and stand, stood out that way for a while. If you did not get that in your reading, I'm sorry you missed it, I don't really know how. It has its issues with gender not being represented the best because it was written by a dude in the 90s, but it's still much better than most of fantasy. And if Amazon wants to turn around and emphasize and re-update those kind of progressive points, I don't think Robert Jordan would have a problem with that because it's something he was clearly trying to go for. Just look at the gender breakdown of the series. It's female dominated for most of it because that's the point. I mean, even look at this political spectrum of the world. Many of the most powerful rulers are women. The magic system is female dominated. This is how the world works, and it's something that I think makes it not only stand out, but more enjoyable to read because it breaks the pattern of what we're used to. So I'm all for it. This article is fascinating to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope you like and subscribe. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And special, special shout out to Wiley Willy Rojas. I'm not entirely sure how to say it, of course, because it's me. But you get your name mispronounced by me now. So there you go. Hope you enjoy. Have a good one. Peace.